Hello everybody and welcome back to the King Fox channel. My name is Matt Conagher and I'm building a Kit Fox Model 7 STI, which is here. You're probably wondering why I have a tire on the table. Well, I am also. So in the previous videos you saw me putting the gear on the airplane. Um, I could pull up a section of the video where I think I made my grave mistake and, and I'll talk about that a little bit in this video. So of course the Alaskan bush wheel has a tube built right into it so there's no tire tube combination. The Grove gear install talks about your tire and your tube which pretty much is the same type of scenario here. Um, I'll get a video clip of this section of the inside of the tire. It's quite wrinkly like a raisin um, as you're assembling the tube and as you're assembling the hub inside the tire itself. So there is a little bit of caution in the manual here. It says be careful not to pinch the tube section uh, between the halves of the wheel as they come together. Listen for a crisp metal to metal contact with the wheel halves before tightening the bolts. If you have difficulty ensuring that the tube is not caught between the wheel halves, a ring of thin cardboard can be taped in place around the wheel half split to line up the wheel half split line to help guard the tube. Um, I did not use uh, a ring of cardboard so the first, the first wheel I put together, I put the two halves in, I put one half in, I slid the bolts through, I lined the other half up on the bolts as you have to, and I pushed them in. As you, you saw me in the video stand on the side of the rim while the tire's laying flat, and that pushes it down because there is a, there is a small bit of a, not really a bead, so to say, but there's a concave portion of the tire that the rim pops into. Uh, if, I, if you can't get it popped into that, then by using that long eye bolt you saw with my makeshift wooden washers and nuts. I was able to pull that together gently using more force than I could use with my hands and I could hear the two rims pop into that concave portion of the tire. Um, on the first one I definitely could hear the metal to metal contact so therefore I could assume or I don't like to assume Therefore, I, could, I would know that the, the tires, the rims themselves are touching each other and there's no tube in between there because, because I could hear them clanking together. Whereas on the second tire, I, couldn't, I was having a difficulty getting those rims to pop into that concave portion. So I put my wooden piece on there, pulled it together, and then not being able to get the bolts all the way through should have been an, an indication that there was an issue. Uh, I did put the bolts through and tighten them up. Put the gear on the airplane, it looked good. I slid it over into the corner of the garage, came out the next morning and it had a list to it. That might be a naval term. It basically it had a flat tire. So I aired up the tire again, I could hear air leaking. I thought, well, oh, maybe I didn't seat the valve stem properly. So I pulled it out, reseated it, reinflated it. And again, I could hear air seeping out. So I took the tire off the, off the plane, pulled the rim apart. And that's when I saw my the pinching portion of the, the inside of the tire. Now, I took the tire to two tire shops here in town and they both turned me away, probably for liability purposes. Uh, I called a mechanic that I've used in the past to work on the airplane and he told me that I, I was um, So I called Alaskan Bushwheel and explained my situation to them and asked them if I was up a creek without a paddle and they basically said, yes, uh, could we interest you in a blemish tire which gives you 10% off. So, so I'm, I'm screwed. Probably. So what I've done is I got a patch kit. So I sped up to Menards and I picked up a patch kit, which uh, many of you are probably cringing at. And I am also, because this is going to cost me dearly to replace because the, so the tire is brand new, but it has a hole in the middle. So it's therefore useless. Um, in the meantime, I put the gear on so that I could move the airplane around the garage. So I'm going to attempt to patch the tire so that I can put the rim back in it, get it on the airplane, and I'll use the tire temporarily only while I'm in the garage until I can sell myself enough to afford to buy another tire, and then I'll get one on order. And it might have a blemish in it if I can save 10% because I don't really care if the tire has a, a spot on the outside of it. This is not a show plane, but I need a functional tire. so. If anybody has any tips or tricks or has done this in the past and they have some sort of workaround, I'd be happy to hear about it. Um, but yeah, in the meantime, I'll be patching it up and see, see what we can do from there. So let's get into this next video. Thanks for coming back and uh, 
If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little tiny bell for future notifications so you don't miss excellent content like my screw up here. So on the website, the tires are running about $1,730. So if I can get $173 off, that leaves about a $1,500. I'll put the number down below because public math isn't my strong point. So the $1,557 mistake um, does not make me excited about that. But I guess that's the only way you learn is by making mistakes. So if that scares you, put the tire together the right way the first time or phone a friend. Anyway, I'm going to accept my mistake. Definitely not happy with it, but there's not much I can do about it at this point. So I could just go back to the previous video where I hadn't had the gear on and then everything would be fine and then stop there, but that's it's not going to help me out. So let me try to get this thing patched up and on the airplane for temporary use. Okay, I'm gonna to try to squeeze this thing together here without pinching the rim again, and uh, hopefully get some washers and nuts on here so that I can put some air in it and get it back on the plane so I can move things around freely in the garage. I'm really close, I just lack getting those bolts through the brake hub here. Pretty technical, pretty technical setup. I don't need much, just about a quarter of an inch. So this mechanical means is more than I can do with my arms and I don't want to stand on the tire again and try to pop it together and get the bolts through there. So I'm gonna listen as I apply a little bit of pressure and hopefully I can see the bolts coming through. I'm lined up. I can see all three, all three lugs in there. I'm probably gonna have to put a wrench on that, or I can turn the other side and hold this. I'm about a sixteenth of the way through. That one is completely out. So I guess I can put it back up here on the table and maybe you can see a little bit of what I'm doing. I can barely see it. So there's a, a lug in there and got one up there. And I just need to squeeze the tire together to get them to come through. I'm gonna need a wrench. They did mention that you could put a cardboard sleeve around the rim, but I guess you're going to leave that in there and it's going to get wet and rot and just doesn't seem like a, a good idea. Maybe there's a better way to do this than this, but for right now, I don't know what it is. Now, the good news is, is I have enough room to get some washers and some nuts on there. Then I'm going to relieve the pressure on this makeshift bolt thingy that I have to pull things together and listen to see if I can hear clanking from rim touching rim or if I think I'm pinching the tire again. 
So we will try to get these nuts on so it doesn't just come right back apart when I release the pressure. I don't have a lot of room, so you're probably not gonna get to see what I'm doing. not where it belongs. Okay, I think I have enough on there, so I'm gonna release this. I can feel with my middle finger the two pieces of the rim coming together, but what you can't see or know is if you have a piece of the tire stuck in there. Doesn't feel like anywhere there's any tire in between. And it's hard to, it's hard to tell if I have metal to metal contact, but I don't, it's just only one way to find out and that's pinch your tight and see if it goes flat the next day, then you know for sure. Now there I'm hearing metal. Sounds like metal. So I'm gonna say I have metal. Probably I guess if I had one of those little scopes and the nice camera so you could look in there and see around the corner on the computer screen, that might work, but I don't have one of those. So although for the price of my mistake, I probably could have bought 15 of them. So I will tighten up the nuts. It's always something. Need more length. Ah, ah, ah. Quick test again to see if I can feel any obstructions in there. I feel none. Everything feels smooth and nice, so I'll keep tightening. I'm going snug right now because, again, it's got a patch in it, two patches in it. I'm not going to put it under load aside from carrying the weight of the airplane. What I am going to do right now is throw some air in it and make sure I don't hear any more leaks. About seven pounds. It's about 10 pounds, too much. I'm gonna go down to eight. Eight pounds. I don't hear any leaks. So I'm gonna say that's good for now. Let's put it on the plane. Probably give this spindle a little wipe since I have some residue on here. also my wood shop slash plumbing location anything it needs to be airplane shop etc okay need a brake pad put around here somewhere
So I'm this far along, I will put the nut on. So if she falls off my OSHA proof jack, nothing too terrible happens. Okay, there's my brake pad right here. This part was probably easier to put on prior to taking this off. size of course okay tighten the big nut up I'm gonna take it off my wonderful jacks and set her on the ground. All right, now it looks like it did a few months ago before I screwed everything up. As you can see, it's back on the wheels, it's sitting even. Uh, I made a huge mistake here, I screwed that tire up. Um, I'm going to pay for it. Um, turns out that I'm actually the person responsible for the problem and no one else. I tried to blame the government, but I guess I just can't. So it's, it's my fault since I'm the only one who worked on it. But uh, let's move on to something else. As I was looking around to find the proper air pressure, minimums and maximums, for the 29 inch air streaks, I came across the instructions for continued airworthiness for the installation of Alaskan bushwheel tender tires from Airframes Alaska. And reading down the page, I was looking for the, again, the minimum and maximum air tire pressure, and I came across a few other things. I don't believe that these instructions came with my tires, so I followed whatever was in the manual for mounting the, mounting whatever tire that would come with the airplane, I suppose, eight and a half by sixes. Uh, what I probably should have done, I guess, is gone to the Airframes Alaska website to see if there were any installation instructions. But under installation of main landing tires, I found a few handy tips. It said there's a red dot on the tire, which marks the light side of the tire. This is in reference to balancing. It says most production limits are satisfactory for most operators and generally are not noticed unless the tires are run at high speed on smooth pavement. Um, as far as mounting goes, so use a direct reading or dial type low pressure air gauge, which is what I have. And it says to tape or fill with silicone the, the tube valve stem holes located on the wheels, which is the rim. I guess in this case, when they say the wheels, and it keeps the dirt and grit out of the tire core. This step is unnecessary if you have the 35 inch tires, which I do not have, so, and a different rim. Lubricate the bead core area of the tire with a light coat of talc or soapy water. Remove the bearings from the rims and visually assure that the wheel halves are drawn together evenly and aligned or mated and that none of the rubber on the tire core between the tire beads gets pinched between the wheel halves. Insert the disc brake or rotor. Insert, evenly tighten, and correctly torque the wheel bolts, nuts, and washers. So there's basically some installation tips as far as putting the rim on opposed to my method that you saw me use here in the in this video. I will be utilizing that in the near future. It also says that it is recommended to use dry nitrogen. Dry nitrogen will not sustain combustion and will reduce degradation of the liner material and casing plies due to oxidation, reducing possible leakage problems. So I found that information helpful. Um, as I tend to find information helpful, hindsight's being 2020, when we make a big mistake that costs a lot of money, we hopefully will look into it a little bit more and figure out what we did wrong and learn from. I would have 
rather have had the rudder pedal tubes be my worst and most expensive mistake, but it looks like so far this one is going to be my largest to date. Um, it's a hard one to deal with, but what other choice do I have? So that's going to wrap up today's episode. If you haven't already done so, hit the like button, the subscribe button, and the little bell for future notifications so you don't miss any good videos like this when they come out. So thanks for watching, stay tuned, and we'll see you guys on the next video. Goodbye.